Hello, friends, and welcome to Shauna Stitches. I'm Shauna, and this is my crafty podcast where I talk about all the things that I've been working on lately. This is episode number 70, and today is February the 17th, 2023. Thank you all so much for being here. I do appreciate it. If you feel so inclined, a like and a subscribe would help more viewers find us here so they can join in the conversation. Well, I have been very busy, but I feel like I don't have a ton to show, which I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. I wish I had more, but I also really wanted to get a podcast up for you all. So I'm trying for kind of two times a month. That seems to be working, especially with some of the extra things I have going on in the background. Let's go ahead and start straight away with finished objects. I do have a pair of Desert Vista Dye Work socks. I forget, I have to cover my face, then it should focus, I think, maybe. Let's try it like this. Uh, these are the Desert Vista Dye Work socks in the My Speckled Heart color. And they are a finished pair. Um, I knit these vanilla on a 2.25 millimeter circular. I do 20 rounds for the cuff and about 70 rounds for the leg. And then I have a very high instep, so I do an extra long heel flap. And that's a slip stitch heel flap. And what I do to not mess up the striping sequence is that I pull from the center of the ball to start the heel. And I normally am an outside of the ball for the rest of the leg person. So other than the heels, well, I guess these don't match match because I didn't start them at the same point, but uh, anyway, they are a finished pair. What else to say about these? Um, if you're not familiar, Desert Vista Dye Works does a yearly knit along where you knit one pair of socks every month. They have to be started on the first or later and finished by the end of the month. And if you finish all 12, you get an extra special, not one of a kind skein, but it's uh, unique to the cowl. So if you finish it, everyone else that finishes all 12 gets one special skein that is unique to just those people who finished, which I think is really awesome. I forgot to mention that I am wearing the Weekender, which is a sweater by Andrea Mowry. I do love this sweater. It's interesting in that the uh, body is in reverse stockinette and the sleeves are in stockinette. So it adds a little different look to it. And then it has this seam, which isn't super easy to see on my lighting, but it has a seam that goes down the middle of both the front and the back. Um, this is one of my favorite sweaters. I can't remember what the yarn is. It's The yarn isn't my favorite, but I do like the way the finished sweater looks. Okay, so there we have what I'm wearing and my one finished object. Now let's talk about some works in progress. I have two brand new works in progress to show you. The first one is this, which is huge. Uh, this is the travel mode baby blanket, which this is kind of a, I don't know if it's a long story, but it's maybe a bit of a weird story. Um, I went through my acrylic stash, which I have a pretty extensive one. Um, this, is, this is what I'm using here. Um, I went through that because I was looking for some gender neutral colors. Uh, I know somebody who is expecting a baby and they are not gonna find out the sex ahead of time. So I went through and saw what I could found, find and then, um, I think I'd already cast on and as I'm casting on, I just had all this doubt coming up in my mind um, because this person hasn't been very knit worthy in the past and I don't think that they're gonna like these colors. So then I thought, should I just rip it out? I don't know. Um, but I had gotten pretty far at that point and then I decided, you know what? Some other baby will love this. So, um, if you don't remember, I, I knit the Travel Mode 2.0 shawl out of a set of Advent minis, and I loved that process, and this is very similar. So I started with that white triangle, 
the, I believe the mint was next. And then this orange, which I'm going to be honest, isn't looking quite the same on the camera. It's kind of a cantaloupe color. And this one here is like a minty blue, I guess. But I think it's a little bit on the greener side than what you're seeing. And I'm losing stitches. That's never good. So, um, this white and tan section here is the section four. And so I think that means this is a quarter done um, because it has sort of four sections that make up a square that all look like this. So my other two colors, I'm really excited for this one. I love a rainbow. Um, this is one of the few that I actually have a label for. It's called Sweet Delight Prints in the color Sprinkles by Baby Bee. I think this might be from Hobby Lobby. I don't remember. I've been to Hobby Lobby like twice in my life ever, and I this may be from there. And the other color that will be going next to that is this yellow. So I think these two with the mint and the um, orangey color will look nice. Maybe, <laughs> we'll see. Um, I mean, ultimately, a baby doesn't really care. It's all about the parents that, that might care. So anyway, that is put on hold because of my next work in progress. Uh, sock Madness 17, the qualifier sock came out yesterday and I was on the fence. I pulled out all my yarn stash, all my at least fingering weight yarn stash because I was thinking I might need to dye up some of my bare skeins of yarn because for Sock Madness, they really recommend solids or tonals for a lot of the patterns in order to get the pattern to show just right. So I went through, found all my solids, all my tonals that were sock yarns and was pleasantly surprised that I don't think I should have to dye up anything at all because <laughs> like usual, I have way more than I thought I did. So that being said, the first pattern is out and it's a bit difficult to see, I guess, uh, at this moment in time, but what you can see for sure <laughs> is all these ends that have to be woven in. Isn't that crazy? Um, so this is intarsia. I've never knit intarsia before. I have a yarn tangle going on. Um, but I will say, uh, watching the video, it didn't quite make sense. Even the cast on for me didn't quite make sense. This has a folded cuff, so no ribbing. Um, See if I can show. It looks quite nice and it feels really nice and squishy. But the cast on was a bit confusing. It's all a little confusing for me, either the written or the video, until I actually have it on the needles and I can process the movements, the feelings, the, the in person visual compared to either what I'm reading or what I'm watching. So, that being said, um, intarsia is not as hard as I thought it was going to be. It's just very fiddly. Um, lots and lots of ends. It looks a bit crazy right now because I haven't woven in any of the ends and that can make some, you know, longer stitches and it can make it a bit gappy in some places. But once I weave in the ends, that should all, maybe not all, but it should help a lot. So I think I'm doing it right. There's kind of this um, back seam here. And anyway, we'll see. We'll see if it meets the uh, qualifications in order to actually be put on a team. This is insanely time consuming. Of course, I was learning a new technique, changing colors a lot, but I finished I can't remember how many rows on the balloons, but I finished the balloons this morning and then did this uh, stockinette portion and I'm just ready to get started on the rest of the pattern. I guess I should tell you what this is called. It's called, it's a German name and I'm probably going to get it wrong, but it's Leicht, L-E-I-C-H-T. Um, and 
these are all balloons, 17 different colored balloons. They're all unique. And uh, what will happen next is there will be a girl like holding on to the balloons like this. And she will go down both the rest of the leg and the foot of the sock. And then the same color that the girl is will be the color of the toe. And then you go in after the fact and you put some strings coming down from the balloons to her hand. So this is sock number one. I do have the second cuff done, but that's it. I think I was smart and I put a lifeline in here. And of course, because I put it in, I didn't need it, I don't think. I'm telling you what though, if I submit these and they're like, you did some portion wrong, there's no way I'm re-knitting these. No way, no way. Um, if that's the case, I will just watch from the sidelines again. I watched last year and thought it looked like a lot of fun. Um, but this year, I wasn't sure if I wanted to join. I was kind of waiting to see what the pattern would be. Um, and I, I honestly don't know what pattern could have come out that I would have been like, no way, I'm not even trying that or, you know, whatever. But um, I'm giving it a go. So we shall see. And I'll update y'all on whether or not I get put on a team or if I'm going to be a cheerleader this year. All right, my next... I think my last work in progress that I'm going to show are my temperature socks. There we go. That is the first 47 days of 2023 for the temperature in Portland, Oregon. And these are one row per the high temperature. I really like the patterning sequence that it's making so far. The light gray uh, that you see a couple times here, that is the coldest temperature other than white, which isn't appearing in the sock other than the toe. Uh, gray is the next warmer color, and then blue is so far the warmest color. Um, one of these blue stripes here was a 57 degree day, so that was pretty nice. The next color that hasn't been added yet is green. I'm really looking forward to that. I think it has to be 63 or something, but Spring is in the air. I know it is because the other day I was at work and I was getting um, gas for my work car and I saw a really big fat bumblebee flying by with pollen all over its legs. And so that's my first inkling that spring is coming our way. I cannot wait. All right, so that is all the knitting that I have to show. I don't think I've worked on anything else since my last podcast. I should have been working on my uh, I can't even remember the name of it. Oh my goodness. My souffle. Yes. Thank you. My souffle. You were all shouting it at me, but I haven't worked on that. Um, yeah. So I think that's it. Uh, the last thing I have to show you is my spinning progress. I know I've shown you this bobbin. Oh, no, sorry. This bobbin, this bobbin was bobbin number one of my three braid combo spin. So this is an entire braid, about four ounces. And this is bobbin number two. So there are those two. And I think I showed you both of those last time. I will insert a photo of what bobbin number three is looking like. But I did bring just a little bit of the fiber to show you. This is the Malabrigo Nube color. Arco Iris. Come on. Well, that is definitely not wanting to focus. Come on. All right, my hands are full. Let's try this. Nope, it just really doesn't want to focus on that, does it? There we go. Arco Iris, which is color 866. No idea if they still dye that color. I've had it in my stash for probably three or four years. And as I spin this, you can see what the colors look like on the bobbin. I'm not really sure how all three of these are going to look when they are applied together. Originally, you know, they all kind of had sort of the greens and yellows and that sort of thing. And looking at it now, I'm not really sure. It's crazy, though, because inside of each of these bobbins, there's so many more colors that you can't see. So... 
I'm just going with it. And uh, although it's not plied together, it's going to be. And by that point, it will be too late to turn back. So yeah, that's it. What do we have for life stuff? Um, I'm still doing a lot of homework for my special leadership program and I've been putting it off because I've been busy doing sock madness socks, which I am strangely enjoying more than I probably should be. Um, yeah, I just feel like I don't have a ton to really share. It's been busy, but not busy, which does that even make sense? I don't think it does. Um, anyway. Thank you all so much for joining me today for this very short little update podcast. I do appreciate each and every one of you joining me. Um, please leave any comments or questions down below. I forgot to mention, as I almost always do, that you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Shauna Stitches. And of course, here on YouTube where you're watching this also as Shauna Stitches. All right. Thank you so much. I will talk to you all soon. Bye.